That being said, once I torque these properly and put them on, it shouldn't really have much downside other than the fact that you have more bolted joints that you have to undo to get to servicing. So I'm going to go ahead and take this as an opportunity to go ahead and remove the brake drums and replace the brake shoes and springs just so that I know that I'm not going to have to take it off for a while. So to start with your rear drum brakes, first thing you want to do is go ahead and park your car safely, chalk your wheels, let your emergency brake or parking brake out, and you got to remove the drum. Now there's two holes right here that you can use as uh, a pressing point. I guess it's, uh, I forget the exact thread, it's like a 10 millimeter bolt that you could screw in and it will press against the back plate. But if you're lucky, you can kind of slide it out and it should just come right off. Now, if you're unfamiliar with drum brakes, the inside of this drum, this is actually the braking surface. So if your brakes are very badly worn, you can actually get a groove that is worn in here, and that means that your pads right here are going to be stuck in a groove. That can make it difficult to remove the drum. You're either going to have to, again, use the press points that will press up against the axle flange, or there is an access hole with a little rubber plug in the back, and that gives you access to the strut adjuster assembly, which I'll show you that here really quickly. The strut adjuster is where that little star gear is and you can see that there's a, a little arm that floats on it there. But basically what you would have to do is the access panel is this rubber plug right here. And from the back side of the drum you would have to use one screwdriver to pull this out of the way. And then you would need to rotate the star gear. Now that's easier said than done. A lot of times when they've been in here, it's been very hot. There's a lot of brake dust around, it gets dirty. So a lot of times it's not just easy, but basically what that does is it shortens the strut that goes from this point to this point, and it allows all of these springs to suck in where the brake shoes are. And that should relieve the brake shoes from the groove. That being said, I've had some that were so badly worn, I've actually just got an angle grinder and took it to the actual drum. That was the easier way to remove it. But this is where you need to be to get to your drum brakes. Go ahead and use your camera phone to take some pictures of all of these different springs, how all of these things are oriented, because once you get everything removed, you might forget exactly how everything goes. So I've got my wire cutters here, and I'm gonna start with this spring. And it's difficult because the spring hook's kind of short, but you gotta pinch the end of it. And go ahead and remove it. It takes quite a bit of effort. You can see that's just got two hooks on it. And where that connected to was this kind of triangular shaped hole on either brake shoe. Next, I'm gonna grab this guy, and this is the long spring hook that's easier to grab it. You can see how this spring is oriented. This has like an inverse 90 degree. And that goes into that hole right there. And that goes into a little notch on this little lever arm. This little lever arm is part of the adjuster assembly to automatically adjust the length of this strut. So I'm gonna go ahead with these guys. These are springs and little spring retainers. It actually has a little pin that goes through and it actually goes to the back of the backer plate. If you look very closely at it, you can see that it's like a slot and you just gotta rotate it 90 degrees to relieve the spring pressure off of it. And then the shoe will kind of come off. You can see the brake adjuster strut. This adjusts the feel of the park brake and as the brake shoes wear and the brakes need to get pushed further and further out, that star wheel gets hit by that little lever and that will lengthen that strut and it'll push the shoes a little further out each time. So these springs over here are similar to like valve springs on like small gas engines if you've ever rebuilt you know a riding lawn mower or a zero turn mower or something like that. Very simple, needle nose pliers work great on that. All right, so I'm gonna grip the end of the pin and I'm gonna push the spring in with my fingers. And then I gotta rotate it 90. And 
and there it goes. All right. So it had a little cup washer on the end, the spring, and it had this little retainer guy. You can see it's a slotted piece. And this is the pin that went through the back. So you can see there's a slot on the end. Rotate it 90. And this is what I was talking about. That spring, easy to get out now. Brake shoe, that guy's pretty worn. The next shoe is the exact same way. So get your needle nose pliers on it. Figure out the best way to just compress the spring a little bit. And everything falls apart. Nice and slow. This is the auto adjusting strut rod. You can see how dirty it is. Make sure that you clean it up. Brake cleaner, PB blaster, whatever so that the threads are nice and clean and that way it'll actually auto adjust and not just get bound up. So the last piece is going to be this cable. So you got to pull the spring back so you can get some play on the cable and just pull it out. And your drum brakes are all torn apart. So now is a good time to go ahead and clean up this with Brake Clean PB Blaster and get the threads nice and clean. You go ahead and screw it in to the maximum depth or the shortest overall length is the better way to think of it. Now this is the rear driver side tire and it's actually a reverse thread and that's just because both of the tires or brake assemblies are mirror image so the threads had to be opposite for the mechanisms to work the same. So this one, if you turn it to the right, it actually unscrews it so go ahead and make it the shortest length. That'll make it easier on assembly. You want them to go ahead and be fully compressed so that you have enough room to slide your drum over. Now let's look at this guy. This is going to be part of the park brake assembly. So there's a little horseshoe clip here that you need to remove. There's a wave washer on the back side. And you may remember this guy that had a, a spring on it. That hooks on to one of the sides like that. I will say that the, the stud that sticks out on the side, they're not the exact same. The difference is in the slot. So this will only fit on one side, and that's just so that you make sure that you get the brake lever on the correct side and you don't misassemble. So that's a nice way of uh, design for assembly. You design the asymmetry into it so that mistakes cannot be made. So with this, you got to use a flat blade screwdriver, pry it out, and then if you get a spring kit, I got one from AutoZone. It comes with wave washers and it comes with a little horseshoe clip. So you just got to mess with that clip. Maybe try using a hammer. I used a hammer on it and try and drive it back. I think I probably made the mistake this time if I got it a little too mangled. And now that clip's gone. This piece comes straight up. Wave washer, if you're not familiar with it, is just a non-flat washer. It's got like a wave in it. That just helps takes up lateral space. So you don't really need a lot of spring pressure per se, but you just put that wave washer on first. And then you have to push this bracket on and then slide the new clip in place. You may want to try and use, you know, channel locks or something to hold the wave washer flat and kind of squish everything together. All right, so I got that started have to put a side of the screwdriver on it. Kind of hammer it in place, push it in. And there we go. And of course, mine was very difficult to remove. That's because I like to put needle nose pliers on the ends and kind of squish it in, make sure that it's in the groove nice and tight. And you may remember this guy. Just make sure that that fits over nice and smooth. You can deal with that on final assembly. All right, so my AutoZone spring kit comes with these springs. They should look familiar. Small one goes on the bottom over here. Got the springs. They have new retainer pins, new retainer little top hat pieces. And we're just going to go ahead and reassemble. If you kind of forget, uh, you know, which side went where, 
good thing to do is to look for this guy because you know that this goes on the cable here. So go ahead and get that locked in. So you just got to find the hole on the back side of the plate, slide the retainer pin through. So spring, retainer. Try and line the pin up vertically or so. And I find this easier to try and push the spring down and then rotate the whole spring instead of trying to grab the pin after you push the spring down. You know, you try and get your brake shoes lined up, you know, so that it matches up over here. But realistically, you have a lot of play in the parts. So once you get the spring set, you can always adjust them as needed. So that is rotated enough to hold it on. And then I can do a final twist with the pliers. There we go. That's at a perfect 90 degree. Mess around with this shoe, get it up near the cylinder. Boom. Yeah, that's good enough. So you can see this little feature in the back panel here. That's a spring retention thing. So I just got to pull on the end of it. I just had to grab the spring and compress it enough to get behind the hooks there. Put the little spring retainer here, get your pin in place. I'm going to go ahead and orient the slot vertically. And I'll deal with the other springs once the shoes are in place. This is probably the more frustrating part because it's not overly difficult. It just takes a few tries. And that's what you're looking for is like the slots are really 90 degrees apart that'll give you your maximum retention these features on the brake shoes need to go ahead and line up with the cylinder here and there is a stop kind of right here and right here for the bottom of the brake shoe and so you'll need to kind of adjust them around and then you'll start stretching the strings back into place. And there's this tab that goes down so the spring goes on the back side of that tab with the hooks going towards the backer plate. Now you see this guy. I screwed it in to the shortest length. You can see there's a notch that has a wider section and a notch that is more V-shaped. The wider section actually goes right here and the wider section is wide enough to go over the metal of the brake shoe and the metal of the e-brake or parking brake arm. And you just kind of slide it in there. So right now I got the spring on the bottom so that's pulling in this part. But since I don't have the springs up here you can see it's pretty loose up here. But once you put the other springs on it's going to pull the top together. You're going to be fully seated up on the wheel cylinder. This little hook guy comes up and over here and you can see that's where that skinny v-notch and the strut goes and there's nothing that's going to hold that in place until you put the springs on it's going to go up here this goes over the strut rod i'm just going to stretch it and hook it right into the v-notch there More coils go over here. Obviously, it's less crowded. You got more room for coils. Then there's a wire behind the actual hub flange. And then you got the smaller coil length. And that's going to go onto the brake shoe right there. So that's your drum brakes. Your drum should slide over. Now, the adjustment that a lot of people talk about involve the star wheel and everything. But there's not actually a, a specification in the factory service manual about how to adjust it. Basically, you want the shoes here to be as far out as possible while still being able to get 
the overall drum over the shoes. Now, it will auto lengthen, it will get longer. So I'm gonna hit the regular brake pedal here, which should lengthen and push these guys out, and then it should retract when I take my foot off of the brake pedal. And then the park brake should actuate this lever, and it should push this up into the star gear. One little tip, if you still can't get your drum to go on, make sure that you do have that strut not only to the shortest possible position, but make sure that the notches are securely lined up. I was actually fighting my drum for a little while, and it turns out that it just wasn't fully seated in the notches that go here. Once I took the springs off and made sure that they were securely seated in the groove on the brake shoe, the spring pressure actually brought in the wheel cylinders a little bit more to make it even smaller. So this should make it easier to put the drum on. And that's all it is. Your drum brakes are done. Before wrapping up this video, I wanted to go ahead and emphasize something that may not have been clear throughout the flow of the video. I first mentioned the park brake adjuster strut, and I tell you to go ahead and assemble it down to the shortest length possible. On reassembly, I say that the goal is to have it adjusted to the longest possible length that still allows you to fit your brake drum over your brake shoes. It's true that my general preference is to allow the ratcheting mechanism to go ahead and lengthen the adjuster strut to whatever length that it needs to be, so that's why I start with it small and then I allow the park brake actuations to go ahead and automatically adjust it. I also make sure that I repeatedly engage the park brake immediately after I do the brake job and have everything put back together. Plus, I routinely use my park brake anytime I park my vehicle, so I know that I'm going to be getting consistent actuations of that star gear. That's also why I mentioned you really want to clean up the thread so that it rotates easily, because especially when it's under spring tension like that, it's going to be difficult to rotate the star gear, especially by hand. So that's why I allow the mechanism that's built in to go ahead and do that. But if you want to start off with a perfect brake clearance, then you're going to have to kind of fine tune it. So if you want to fine tune the length of that adjuster strut, then what you can do is start with it at a longer length and then work your way down and shorten it through the axis panel on the back if you need to. Or you can start with a shorter length and then you can either ratchet it using multiple actuations of the park brake lever, or if you have to, you might have to take springs on and off and manually adjust it. Sometimes that star gear I find is very difficult to use by hand with a screwdriver. So I hope this clears up any questions. Comment below if you have questions or suggestions for future videos, and thanks for watching.